Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thanks. First and foremost, we're just gonna start in one spot and make our way around the shop. So walk through the door or walk through the big door, either one. So this big door is a 16 foot wide, 10 foot tall um, Chamberlain. Yeah, it's got Chamberlain lift system on it. Um, wonderful door, it's insulated. The rest of the building is not insulated yet. It will be. Um, we didn't have the money to insulate it this year. So we're gonna wait a year, maybe two years and have it done. I'd rather have it done with spray foam and be done right the first time. We want to do closed cell on the entire building. So the roof, so anything above the walls, so the walls are 12 foot tall, anything above the walls is going to be done with um, three or four inch thick closed cell foam. Anything on the walls will be an inch and a half thick. And that's just because the simple fact that a two by six is one and a half inches by five and a half inches. So one and a half inches of insulation will basically come right to the edge of the boards and we won't lose any storage space for the nails or the screws that we have on the wall hanging things up. Um, so now, once you walk in, obviously you see the lift and stuff like that. But this is where, right, where the skid steer's at is where we park something when we're gonna work on it. This area is a big open area. Um, you know, if you go back several videos uh, back in the spring, we again had our mower conditioner in here. We were fixing it up and it's just better for us. So we could have fixed it this past winter, but we'd have it outside in the elements, everything, you know, even though you're under like a carport, because the only thing we really have that would fit in is our lean to. And all it takes is the wind to switch directions and come out of the south where we'd have to park it. And then a bunch of rain would blow in and we generally have pretty high winds around here, especially whenever we get rain or storms. So this is where we do any work for the most part that doesn't require the lift. Um, we can, tractors will fit in here, or the tractor, one tractor at a time would fit in here. So the, either the 8030 or the 7045, obviously skid steer, our mower conditioner, our bush hog, um, basically every implement we have, the baler, any of it. The goal was again, just to make sure that we could take something apart, even if I have to sit here for a week or two while we're waiting on parts, it's not outside in the elements. That was the big purpose. And that saves us money too, because water getting into like the cutter bar on the mower conditioner. And then even if you run it, it's going to water and oil does not mix and it'll be hard to get all that water out of that bar. So it's easier just to keep water out of it to begin with. Uh, as we go along the walls, so every wall, the whole way around the building has an outlet, 120 volt outlet on every stud, um, multiple different circuits. Each wall has its own circuit basically all the way down, all the way around. The only wall that does not is where the power washer stuff is. And we'll get to that. The other thing is we have airlines. Airlines go all the way around the building as well, all the way over to where the Camaro would normally be parked in that corner. Our 240 volt outlets, we have a bunch of them, but most of them are actually used because when we built this building, we did know what we wanted to put and where we wanted to put it and why we wanted to put it there. So this 240 volt outlet is actually just for the welder use or the plasma cutter use, just you know, outside or by the door or even in the middle floor, wherever. We have extension cord uh, right here for the welder and stuff like that. The other 240 volt outlet, one of them is right here. We already knew it was gonna be the power washer. Um, we actually labeled it that whenever we put it in, but you can use it for anything. Our, all of our 240 volt stuff, we put the same plug on it, so it all has the same welder plug on it. Um, the three prong, three prong uh, plug that we can interchange it anywhere we needed to. We had, uh, this is, it's like a hot seat power washer, uh, obviously heated power washer, so diesel fuel heats the coil and after the, so it goes through the pump, pressurizes it, and then it's pushed through this coil while the coil is hot and it has a flame going through it and it, and it heats it up. So it's a steam washer, I guess. I don't know the technical term. Got it for really cheap. Um, I put a few hundred dollars in parts into it and I actually sold my, once I had this one working and running properly, um, I ended up selling my old power washer, my gas powered one. So I only have like $200 into this. So 
pretty happy with that upgrade. This is where our water comes in. We uh, did not put a bathroom in here for a couple of reasons. One, the original plans for this building was 50 by 80. Unfortunately, with COVID and everything else, all the prices had went so high that we could barely afford to do the 40 by 60 that we did. Um, yes, we could have held off on putting the lift in and then made the 50 by 80. However, the lift is more beneficial to us than having the extra space right now. I, I know, I know it. It's gonna bite me in the butt later. I'm well aware of it, uh, but it, it, it is what it is. So we do have a heat exchanger in here. It comes out from our wood boiler. It's literally right on the other side of this wall. Um, that wood boiler heats our house and the shop. And right now, no, we do not have it set to kick on on a thermostat. We just plug it in whenever we're in here and we want heat, and then we unplug it when we don't want heat. There is a thermostat set up right here for it. Um, it's probably gonna, since the LED display, it's gonna be all kinds of crazy, but you could set the, temp, it tells you what the temperature is in here right now, and then you can set the temp for the heat to kick on or the air to kick on if you wanted to use air conditioning or use it for air conditioning as well. Um, again, once we have it all insulated, we will regulate the temperature to probably around 50 or 55 degrees, just so it's warm enough I can work without gloves on. That is my biggest, I hate working with gloves on. Um, this is where we store all of our extension cords that we really don't need so much anymore, but we still keep them around, obviously we're not gonna throw them away because we will need them at some point. Even though there's an outlet on every stud, we'll still need them. All of our camera stuff sits in here, um, plugged in. Air compressor, um, we actually upgraded this this year as well. Got a smoking deal on this thing, paid a hundred bucks for it, put a $16 uh, new switch on it, and it works great. Sold our old one for like 150 bucks, so came out ahead on that deal, so got a free upgrade. Uh, ladders, some air hoses. These are all extra hoses, so like, um, not so much for hydraulic lines. We actually do have some extra hydraulic line stuff. We try to keep something on hand just so we can get by uh, until we can go get the right part. These are all extra hoses for like, um, most like fuel hoses, vacuum lines, stuff like that. This is where we keep all of our maintenance stuff. Uh, maintenance is very important to us. You could probably tell by that board that we passed over here. Uh, has all of our maintenance, or when we did our maintenance, so we have an idea of when it's due again. But maintenance keeps everything so much better. And yes, our shop is generally this clean. Even if we have a project going on, we try to keep it clean because it makes it so much easier to keep everything flowing. You're not searching for tools. You're not making a mess and then having to clean it up to do something else. It's just easier to be clean and, and have it organized. It makes life so much simpler. I will say that the Army is right on that. Uh, so yeah, all oil filters, we have a bunch of extra oil filters, fuel filters, uh, air filters as a matter of fact, and all kinds of fluids just so we have whatever we might need. We are roughly about 45 minutes, you know, it depends which town you go to, but the town that's most likely to have the parts you're going to need um, is about an hour away. The next closest town, 45 minutes away, they have quite a bit of stuff, and, uh, but it's just inconvenient to drive 45 minutes to go get one part to come back. So that's an hour and a half. So it's nice to have general stuff on hand. If we need it, we have it. Um, oil drain stuff, oil filters, or sorry, uh, ones for the lift, ones for like if we did an oil change on the ground. Bolt bins, the store stuff. We have lights over the workbenches. So if we're working on something, um, like when I was working on the uh, pump for the uh, tractor, when I was working on the hydraulic pump, I actually pulled it off and I was using the bed of the truck. Now I have a workbench I can use and it'll be much better. The, oh, so that's what the lights are really for. There's the same lights that are up top. They're 7,200 lumens each, um, super bright. Very, very, very useful, I love them. And they actually put off enough light that when the vehicles are up here, it actually puts some light under the vehicle too. Bench grinder, bench vise, kind of general standard stuff. Welders, plasma cutter, all of our typical tools are over here. None of them are real big name brand stuff um, other than our Lincoln welder, but we got that given to us a long time ago. Uh, everything else is, you know, nothing real fancy or special. Just gets the job done. Um, I've had these tool this toolbox I had for like 10 years. This now has all my woodworking and plumbing and metalworking tools in it. And then over here has all of our automotive stuff. And the reason being is because we wanted one without a tool chest on top. So we just put a piece of uh, uh, plywood or 
actually just particle board. Put it on top so we can put stuff on here, work on it, and we don't dent up the top of the toolbox. But we can roll that around pretty easily, get it under here, take it over there where we're working on something, and then we can lay our parts out as they come off or lay our bolts out as they come off, less likely to lose things. And the stuff you see on top of here is actually projects that need to be finished. They're just little ones that, they're not hard to do or anything like that. I just want to get them done. Um, so as I have time, I usually knock out little projects here and there. Uh, hang all of our DeWalt tools up there. There's just the typical 3D printed deals where you can hang. Actually, you can hang Milwaukee or DeWalt's on those. You just flip them over. Um, pretty handy. Same thing with the battery holders over there. Um, Shopsmith lathe. It's, well, it's a lathe. It's a table saw, a band saw. Oh, and a drill press. And I think it's a drum sander too. I've got all the different parts for it. We bought that thing a long time ago when we were in Fort Hood. And uh, man, it's been awesome to have. It's just nice. And it's actually a, a sturdy industrial tool. Like I don't have to worry about breaking, it's not cheap. Um, oh, these are just homecoming stuff, flags that I've taken overseas and stuff with me. Um, battery tender actually stays right here all the time for this spot because this is where the Camaro sits in the winter time. So once it snows for the first time um, or any of that rain or snows or sleets or anything like that where they're throwing salt down the road, the Camaro's pretty much grounded for the year. And it'll stay here until spring when the um, springtime rains kind of wash all the salt and junk off the road. Uh, nothing special here. There's another battery tender. It's not mounted. It just sits on the uh, whichever jet ski is being charged at the time or trickle charged at the time. Um, we've had these, bought these for stupid cheap too. They just need a little work. We fixed them up and uh, they actually run pretty good. Uh, fishing stuff, games, like outdoor games. So like uh, Disc Jam or Disc Deflect, I guess is the name of this one. Can Jam is the technical brand, I think. Uh, Yard Jenga. You know, all of our yard tools are over here. Side-by-side um, -side generally does park here. This is where our mower sits. Um, Chrissy generally does do the mowing around here. She likes the, the mow. Um, she has, this is her zero, well, it's our zero turn, but she uses it most of the time. It is diesel powered, it's a bad boy. Um, it's actually a, uh, I think it was summertime where she accidentally put, or maybe it was springtime. Anyways, a while back she accidentally put gas in it, forgetting that it was a diesel. So there's a good le learning point for you, and you can go back on the channel to see when that was. The power washer stuff, again, all is ran down here. It's a 100-foot hose on a 200-foot reel, so there's room for more hose. We just don't really need it. That'll reach all the way to the house and uh, anywhere in the shop that we need to clean. Uh, all of our car wash stuff, all the wands, etc. This flooring actually doesn't go in here. I mean, it does go in here right now because we'll keep it out of the elements, but it's for the rest of the house. We're almost done in the house. It's like 70% done. Um, basically what's left is just to do a little bit of, uh, or all the bathrooms need to be done and my wife and I's bedroom and that's it. And then the house, the flooring be done and then I can actually go put that and uh, store. We did buy extras, so we'll store the extras somewhere probably in here. But uh, As far as the floor goes, so you can see there is a drain in here. So this pad is 40 foot wide, 60 foot long, and uh, there is a drain in the center. I told them that, hey, I, you know, I wanna make sure there's a drain so when I bring vehicles in from outside, if it's raining or whatever, it'll drain out, not a big puddle on the floor. And uh, that was very smart thinking. What I didn't think about was, there's a lot of times that I put vehicles up on the lift. So this is actually the perfect example. The Camaro, we were driving it, and power steering line, started leaking on us and then it started leaking a lot. So basically the leak got way worse. Well, it sprayed all over the exhaust all the way, you know, and then since you're driving, it ends up going all the way down the car. Well, with that power washer and being able to reach everywhere and then obviously being able to get under the vehicle easily, we went ahead and power washed everything off under here, got it all cleaned back up uh, to where it normally sits. But there's no drain over here. And actually the, the floor, so not this line, but that next line on the floor from there, to the drain and then from the other line next to it to the drain it slopes together from over here it doesn't really slope that way it doesn't really slope anywhere um, it actually seems like it kind of slopes back this way a little bit which you know it's not the end of the world so what we do is uh i'll power wash it off and then i have a squeegee 
and I'll push all the water over to the drain. But if I had it all do over again, I would have done another drain over here, most likely. Um, the pad is six inches thick. The crazy thing about this is that you have to have, I wanna say it was five inch thick pad at least, or maybe, I think it was five inch thick to put a two post lift in here. Um, the two post lift is wonderful. I, I love it. It's strong enough to lift our truck and everything like that. Super handy tool to have. I would not, I would highly recommend those. The only things I would really change about our shop, this is probably the number one question we get asked. The only things that we would change about the shop is I would have made it 50 by 80 is what it, uh, I would have done just because of the simple fact that that was our original plan and unfortunately budget cuts had to be made because the price of materials went way. Um, but I would have done 50 by 80 and the other thing I would have done was the change in the floor I just talked about by putting a drain over there under the uh, lift. And so the other reason I would have done a 50 by 80 is and it's not too late. I can add more going this way. I don't really want to. I would really prefer to add going that way if I was going to add. So I guess all in all, yes, we absolutely love it. And uh, I, I can't imagine life without it now. It'd be a lot more difficult. I'd still, I'd still do farming without it, but it would make it a lot more of a headache because last year we waited all winter to fix the mower conditioner. I had plenty of time to do it, just didn't do it because I didn't want to sit outside in the cold. And I also didn't want to leave that open for the chances of, again, the winds changing and it start raining and blow water into it. So lessons to be learned. This seems like a large investment, which yes, it is. Um, so the wife and I doing, and some help from friends and neighbors here and there, uh, it cost us roughly about $37,000 and that's everything. So. The flooring, so, or the concrete work, right? The materials for the whole building, the lights, the electrical, uh, I mean everything. You know, all these tools and stuff we already had. The only tool we bought was this lift. So, and that's included in that price too. The garage door is included in that price. Uh, the heat exchanger, all that stuff. We, well, actually, I guess technically not. We already had the heat exchanger. But it, it does include all the uh, money to run wire, or, uh, our electrical from the telephone pole over to here. Um, the money to run new heat, uh, yeah, heat exchanger or wood boiler lines from the wood boiler to the house and also from the wood boiler into here. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I think I answered all the questions. There were so many of them. I had them written down. And I kind of reviewed them a few times before I did it. If for some reason I missed a question, put it down below and I'll answer it. Um, but I was just trying to make it to where I wasn't answering the same question you know, 30 different times on 15 different videos. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helped you to identify what you want to do for your shop if you're going to build one. But have a blessed week and we'll see you next time.